What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and many people seem to be confused as to how I, and many other people, came up with Overprime's closed beta date from the video provided. So today I'm going to walk you through how to decipher the code and also offer some thoughts on the general history and progress of Overprime. The video in question was Team Soul Leaves New Year's video where they did a bit of a year in review and also provided a list of things we can look forward to this year, including full release and console release. Towards the end of the video, we get the cipher. I'll refer back to this image with the series of multicolored dots as we go along. The first series of dots we get are red and hover over the numbers 2022. Boom, we can assume the red dots are 2022. Next, we get the green dot for one. Next comes two yellow dots for 22. The gray dots come in to highlight in order C, B, T, Charlie, Bravo, Tango, we can make a pretty fair assumption that the CBT stands for Closed Beta Test. So put it all together and we have their Closed Beta Test on January 22nd of 2022. Now for some of this video, I'll be playing their recently released cinematic trailer because uh, it's just, it's fucking cool. I just wanted to dip a little bit into the history of Overprime because it seems some people think it's a brand new game when it's been around just as long, if not longer, than all the other players at the table. That's both a good and bad thing. In one hand, it's nice to know that they have the experience, and on the other, it's kind of like, you know, what the fuck, why isn't it out yet? It's also a little odd trying to establish when Overprime truly started. Do you count Overthrow as the start of Overprime? Okay, before I get into that, I should probably establish what Overthrow and Prime X are, because Overprime is the combination of the two. Overthrow was a passion project created by a man named Rocket Mania that he started working on as soon as the epic assets dropped. It was never meant to be a sustainable game, it was never marketed as such. However, it was made available to the community to play via peer-to-peer -peer network. Rocket stopped working on the game when he landed a job. Overthrow was, it was pretty wonky and buggy, but it worked and it was fun, and I personally didn't give it too much attention because it was never intended to last. Now, Prime X. This was Team Soul Leaves' attempt to use the Paragon assets in an open-world brawler. They first introduced this game to me as a Prime Dunk Royale, whatever whatever that means. To, to be perfectly honest, I still don't quite understand what they were going for with this. But shortly after they announced Prime X, Team Soul Leave picked up Rocket Mania and decided to enter the ring of direct Paragon successors. They made an announcement saying that they didn't think anyone else was doing it right, so that they were going to do it. Prime X was supposedly put on the back burner and would still be worked on, but I haven't heard anything about this in a very long time. So it's a matter of opinion if you think Overthrow should be counted as part of Overprime's development. I personally think it should be. After the announcement that Team Soli would now be working on a Paragon successor, they started churning out content. They designed a very legacy-inspired map with a ton of playable Paragon heroes. The game was available to absolutely anyone who wanted to play, but there was no launcher and the download process was a little too complicated for most people. The game itself was also a little wonky. You could tell that they had gone for quantity over quality. They continued to develop the game though, making a few improvements and also creating a monolith style map that you could choose to play on. It was about this time that they also opened servers for the game so you could use regular matchmaking instead of having to create a game via peer to peer. That all sounds fantastic, however those who were brave enough to take on the daunting download process were rewarded with a very unpolished game. Ranged basic attack point of origin was behind your character, so shots would pass through your body on the way to the target. Strafing animations would be just the hero's legs turning while the upper body stayed in place. Hell, some of the heroes wouldn't even turn, you would, you would face the camera when running backwards. The map was gorgeous, but it felt like you were kind of running on top of a picture of the map instead of actually being in the world. It felt a lot like playing a poorly photoshopped clickbait thumbnail. They had made a lot of progress, but most of the community, including myself, looked at Overprime as a bit of a meme and treated it as such. I didn't start taking Team Soul Leave seriously until they designed their own ARAM map and introduced it as a mode you could play alongside the Legacy and Monolith maps. I came back to give it a go and holy shit, there was so much improvement. Blend spaces had been added to animations, basic attacks came out of the guns, it felt like my hero was actually in the world. The ARAM mode is the first time I took a step back and decided that I should probably start taking this project a bit more seriously. I had always wanted them to succeed, but I kind of doubted that they could. Now I actually felt like they had a shot. The quality was starting to catch up with the quantity. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how you look at it, 
It was about this time that they started disabling new accounts, took the servers down, and started to really put in work towards what the game would become. The next news I heard was that Soul Eve had been acquired by Netmarble, and the first gameplay I saw after this, it kind of blew me away. It was the stream testing event they held where the devs played against the community. The game looked 100% more polished. They had an established direction for the game, and they had the financial backing to make it a reality. While I certainly haven't had faith in this project all along, I'm smart enough to realize that they have something going for them here, and it looks like a lot of fun. Overprime has finally gone from a meme to a major player. I do want to take a little time to shout out a few of the content creators that remain loyal to Team Soli's vision all along. I'm sure there's a bunch, but three come to mind right off the top of my head. Cherry Temper, Sarah Jog, and Bloodhunter. I'll link their Twitch channels in the video description below as I'm sure they'll be streaming over Prime during the closed beta test. I'll do videos and shit, but your boy don't stream, so check them out instead. Please like the video if you found it informative, subscribe for more third-person MOBA content, but for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangu! Special shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.